This video is going to explain how expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy works on the alternative aggregate supply and aggregate demand model. We're going to look at this model, which is the alternative to this one that we're looking at here. There is a video which explains expansionary fiscal policy on this video, which basically looks like this. Uh, the increase in government spending from G1 to G2 leads to an increase in national income from NY1 to NY2. But we're going to look at the same thing on the alternative model, which is this one here. If you're not sure how this particular model works, there's also videos on this channel which explain that. Fiscal policy refers to the expected levels of government revenue and spending in the coming year, and it is outlined every year in the budget. In this model, the level of government spending equals G1, and that gives us an aggregate demand level of AD1. And that level of aggregate demand corresponds to the NY1 level of national income or output, uh, which we could think of as gross domestic product. An increase in government spending will lead to an increase in aggregate demand. This will lead to a shift out of the aggregate demand curve from AD1 to AD2. This just moves outwards in the same way that a, uh, there would be an increase in a normal demand curve. This new level of aggregate demand leads to a new level of national income, which is NY2. And this is what we would expect from fiscal policy, that an increase in government spending would lead to an increase in national income. And that is why a government would use an expansionary policy to increase the amount of spending in an economy and to uh, lower the rate of unemployment to bring about economic growth. This model, as opposed to the previous model, has a different axis. So instead of having expenditure here on the vertical model, uh, on the vertical axis, this model has price level on the vertical axis. Because of that, in addition to telling us about the change in national income, this model can also indicate to us that there is a change in the price level. Originally the price level was at P1, but the increase in aggregate demand has led to a new uh, equilibrium price level of P2. So in addition to an increase in national income and an increase in output, there has also been an increase in the general level of prices, uh, which we would call inflation. So there is an inflationary effect of fiscal policy. This assumes that the economy is operating in this intermediate range of the aggregate supply curve. If you don't understand the three ranges of the supply curve, the Keynesian, the intermediate and the classical, you should watch the video on this aggregate supply curve which is on this channel. It could be possible that the economy was operating in one of the other levels of the, of the aggregate supply curve. So, for example, if we're at a very low level of aggregate demand, and this was AD1, and that would give us a national income level uh, here of NY1, at this very low level of national income, if there was an increase in aggregate demand, businesses would be willing to increase their output and so output would improve from NY1 to NY2. This was NY1. This is NY2. So we've had an increase in aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2. And as a result of this, there's been an increase in national income from NY1 to NY2. But businesses have been willing to produce this extra output without increasing their prices. This matches the Keynesian view of economics, which says if the government intervenes by increasing their spending, it will increase output. And it is true in economies that are operating at the very low levels of national income. If, however, the economy was at this very high level of national income, so if the aggregate demand was at this level here. We call this level of national income the full employment level of national income. 
That is because even if there was an increase in aggregate demand, the economy physically could not produce any more products. The aggregate supply is at its, to at its absolute maximum. All the, economy, all the resources of the economy are being used, and that's why it's called the full employment. We've employed all of the resources of the economy, so the full employment level of national income. Uh, a classical view of economics would say that if a government was to intervene to increase aggregate demand, that it wouldn't have an impact on output, it would just have an impact on, on the price level. And we can see in this section of the model that that is true. So an increase of aggregate demand, uh, and again, we'll, we'll say that this comes from fiscal policy. So aggregate demand one is tied to a level of government spending G1, and the government increases spending to, to G2 leads to a new level of aggregate demand. In both cases, we end up with a total output level of NY1, and we cannot physically produce any more than that. But the effect of the, uh, the government policy, the expansionary fiscal policy, is that the price level increases from P1 to P2. So at this higher level of national income, an increase in aggregate demand doesn't impact on, it, on output, but it does lead to inflation. We'll run backwards through these stages just very quickly and look at a contractionary fiscal policy. So this is where the government spending reduces and it's going to lead to a decrease in the level of aggregate demand. The contractionary fiscal policy has led to a decrease in aggregate demand uh, as a result of a decrease in the level of government spending from AD1 to AD2. We haven't had a change in the level of national income. In both cases, we're still at this full employment level of national income, so all the resources of the economy uh, are being used. But we are experiencing a decrease in the price level as a result of the decreased demand from, uh, from the government level of government spending. If the economy was at one of the very low levels of national income, a contractionary policy will lead to a decrease in aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2, and national income would fall from NY1 to NY2, but this would not have an effect on the price level. Most economies, however, will operate in this medium range, and it, it is here that, uh, that we'd be able to examine the effect of fiscal policy most often. And what would happen is that uh, originally would have aggregate demand equal to AD1, which would correspond with the level of government spending of G1, and the government decreases their government spending to G2, and that leads to a decrease in aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2. So the curve moves in this direction. Originally, the government produced output at NY1, or sorry, the economy produced output at NY1, and the price level was at P1. As a result of the decrease in aggregate demand, we get a decrease in national income. So we have here a decrease in, in national income from NY1 to NY2. And the reason why the government may have been willing to do this would be that there was uh, a problem with inflation in the economy, and so they decreased their price level from... Oh, by doing this, price levels decrease from P1 to P2. There's less demand for the resources that are available. Uh, this drives down the cost of those resources and our businesses are able to produce the same amount of... Uh, a lower amount of products and they've re, uh, reduced their price because of that. So both of these models, both, both this model and this model, can be used to show an expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy. Uh, but if you wanted to tie in your diagram with uh, the effect of that fiscal policy on inflation, this model would be better to, to use because it does show that price level.